The camera is, 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 is okay, I think. Can you see me? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. So, excuse me, participants, dear participants, I will mute everybody so we can start the session. Okay. Hey, okay. Thank you. Okay. Thank you so okay. much. Thank you. Nice talking to you, ladies. Bye. Nice talking to you too. Bye bye. Dr. Mar Mr. Marwan, thank you. Thank you, Hassana. Uh huh. Did it? Mary, you, you can start, please. Okay. Uh, good morning, everyone. And um, it's lovely to be here. I'm uh, very excited about this training and um, it's an honor uh, to be with you all. Um, let me just first introduce myself. Uh, I'm Mary Adib, uh, Director of Operations and HR at Gemini Africa. And uh, we're partnering with the NISGST uh, uh, as a knowledge partner uh, on this program. Uh, we would like to welcome you all today and um, tell you how uh, happy we are to be uh, participating in such uh, an inspiring uh, program and among inspiring people like yourselves, uh, working together to share our knowledge, to grow our skills and get ready for a better tomorrow. Let us begin the journey together today. Uh, just uh, for later, uh, can I ask you to have a piece of paper and a pen or a pencil uh, in hand because we will be needing it uh, later. Thank you. Okay. So, um, let us think a moment about this proverb and what it means. Where a woman rules, streams run uphill. Is it really possible for a stream to run uphill? And what does this uh, bring to your mind? Um, the reason why I started off with this proverb is that I know I'm standing here among uh, so many great influential women, and I am sure of the essence and the impact of everything that you are already doing in your work and in your communities. Let's take a moment to think how powerful we are and that we are so powerful that there are proverbs that say things about us that are not even possible in real life. It means we can do the impossible and we can do this through leadership. Uh, today, we are going to discuss together uh, one of the very pillars of what the program is based on uh, leadership and we are going to focus on uh, transformational leadership. And before we um, go more into the technical details, uh, let me share with you something personal. I've loved music and singing ever since I was a little girl. My favorite Disney character was, the, was Disney's Little Mermaid. And the reason why I loved her, just because she had a beautiful voice. Um, I always wished to have a beautiful voice. And since this wasn't the case, I learned uh, playing the piano. Uh, 
I was good at it, but I was not superb. Uh, my passion for music continued for years. While I kept searching for something that I would be good at and really um, excelled at, and I wanted it to be related to music. Uh, years passed by and I uh, studied one of my courses uh, during my um, undergraduate studies on music, okay? And during that course, it was uh, about uh, history of music and learning how to uh, understand different kinds of music and so on. Um, it was an academic course and uh, we were required to attend certain uh, sessions and concerts and whatever, and, you know, write documents and reports about them. And then um, it's, it struck me that I was able to really write well about uh, different concerts and one of the things that I learned during the course and then I excelled later at was the ability to differentiate between different instruments. And that is not an easy thing to listen to the different uh, sounds of the violin, the viola, the cello. It's not it's not easy. And I'm sure uh, a lot of you already know that, but I started to understand that it is something that you can learn. And then I found that this was my passion and this is what I like to do. I like to listen to music. But then there was something else that I learned. Let's watch this first together. Can you see the video? Can, can you see my video? No? Okay, one second, please.
Okay. Um, I hope you enjoyed that uh, short video. Um, but going back to the main point, I finally realized that I was fascinated by music because of the synergy that it created, how everyone can play a different instrument and a different melody, and yet create one harmony at the end. It's orchestration. Orchestration to me is leadership. It is creating uh, different, it's combining different melodies and creating a one big harmony that is amazing and is beautiful. And I realized that I was fascinated by music, not because, because I had a beautiful voice or because I was able to uh, tell different instruments from each other, tell them apart. I realized that I was fascinated by music because of the orchestration, because it inspired me. It inspired me and it taught me a lot about leadership. Now, let's move on and get more into our technical stuff. So today we're going to discuss two types of leadership. There are so many types of le leadership and I'm sure as you are, are already professionals and uh, such influential women, I'm sure you know already a lot about leadership. However, today we're going to just focus on transactional leadership and transformational leadership. Uh, I would like you now to take a little poll uh, about those two types of leadership. Transactional leadership, just to make sure we're aligned on what we mean here, transactional leadership is more of the managerial type of leadership, and it's focused more on supervision, organization, and performance. While transformation leadership is more of where a leader would work with a team to identify needed changes, create a vision, and execute that vision. Now I would like you to take the poll. The question that I want you to answer is, what leadership style do you follow? Or you see followed as your organization? The current leadership style that you see, is it transactional or is it transformational? Can you see the poll? Okay, so I'm informed that we need to wait one minute until the poll is uh, active for everyone. Thank you for your patience. Okay, until the poll appears to everyone, let me just clarify. You don't need to go back to Habila. We're gonna have the poll here on Zoom. And basically, what I want you to answer is, what kind of leadership style do you see followed or you are following in your organization currently? The two types of leadership that we have here is transactional leadership and transformational leadership. Transactional leadership is more of the management style of leadership, where it is more focused on supervision, organization, and performance goals, achievement, and so on. While transformational leadership is more of a leader working with the team to identify the changes, create the vision, and execute uh, this vision later on. Thank you for your patience. Okay, um, you can start sharing your answers here if you like in the chat about the type of leadership that you can see followed in your organization or that you're following yourself with your team. And we can talk about that until the poll is appearing to everyone.
Okay, I can I can still answer. Just to make sure that everyone is clear on the definitions. To make sure that everyone is clear on the definitions, let me go over them again. The transactional kind of uh, leadership is the kind where it is more concentrated on management, on organization, planning, executing. The transformational is more related to having your team part of deciding what's happening and putting the vision and so on. Let me check with the IT if the poll is ready yet. I'll be back in a second. I'm so sorry about Thank you for your patience. Okay, the poll is out there, and please, even if you answered in the chat, it will be amazing if you still answer the poll. Waiting for the rest of you. Amazing, amazing ladies. Thank you so much. We still have a few who haven't voted their uh, opinion yet. Okay. I want you to remember your answer because we will need that in a while. Okay, perfect. Uh, thank you very much.
Thank you. Okay. So uh, let's get more into the details uh, about the transactional uh, leadership, uh, leadership style and learn more about it together. James Burns in 1978 defined the transactional leadership as follows. It's when one person takes the initiative of making contact with others for the purpose of an exchange of valued things. Transactional leadership, as we have mentioned, is more of the ma managerial type of leadership. It focuses on supervision, organization, and group performance. It conforms to the existing structure of the organization. It is more of a compliant kind of leadership. Transactional leaders are usually very directive and action-oriented. And they are very, very targeted towards achieving the goals and specifically in defined steps. Transactional leadership also makes the leader who works with, with this kind of style set a criteria for the team members accordingly to previously defined requirements. The criteria for the team members is set so they follow in a certain way to achieve the goals, okay? The transactional uh, leader also manages the individual performance by using reviews. The measures that come out of these reviews are used usually for rewards and penalties. The rewards and penalties are kind of um, decided upon working at Maslow's um, um, uh, hierarchy needs to identify the most basic level of needs. This kind of transactional leadership is very effective when we're handling crisis, when we're handling an emergency, when we're managing projects that need to be carried out in a specific defined way. Transactional leadership is perfect to maintain work processes. And now let's take a quick look on an example of transactional leadership. This part of my life is called internship. 1200 building is Medley Industrial and Sanko Oil. The builder takes to familiarize them with our. This part of my life is called intern. I'm sorry, ladies, we're just trying to fix this uh, sound problem. One second. I'm going to stop sharing.
this part of my life is called internship. 1200 building is Medley Industrial and Sanko Oil. The building across the street is... I'm sorry about this technical problem. I'm trying to fix it. This part of my life is called internship. 1200 building babysitter. You will do whatever it takes to familiarize them with our packages. We need you to match their needs and goals to one of our many financial plans. In essence, you reel them in, we'll cook the fish. <laughs> Whoever brought in the most money after six months was usually hired. Yes, hello, Chris Gardner calling from Mr. Walter Hoff. We were all working our way up call sheets to sign clients. From the bottom to the top. Yes, sir. How from the doorman to the CEO. Okay. They'd stay till seven, but I had Christopher. I had to do in six hours what they'd do in nine. Good afternoon. My name is Chris Gardner. I'm calling from Dean Witter. In order not to waste any time, I wasn't hanging up the phone in between calls. Okay, thank you very much. I realized that by not hanging up the phone, I gained another eight minutes a day. Why, good morning to you. My name is Chris Gardner. I'm calling from Dean Witter. I also wasn't drinking water, so I didn't waste any time in the bathroom. Uh, yes, I'd love to have the opportunity. Okay, no problem at all, sir. Thank you very much. But even doing all this, after two months, I still didn't have time to work my way up a sheet. Walter Ribbon's office. Yes, hello, my name is Chris Gardner. I'm calling from Mr. Walter Ribbon. Concerning? Yes, ma'am, I'm calling from Dean Witter. Just a moment. Mr. Ribbon. Well, uh, hello, sir. My name's Chris Gardner. I'm calling from Dean Witter. Yeah, Chris. Uh, yes, Mr. Ribbon, I would love to have the opportunity to sit with you to discuss some of our products, and I, I'm certain that I could be of some assistance to you. Can you be here in 20 minutes? Uh, uh, 20 minutes, absolutely. Just had someone cancel. Come now. I'll give you a few minutes before I thought the 49ers. I'd, uh, wear a shirt today, um, you know, being the last day and all. Well, thank you. Thank you. We appreciate that. But, um, wear one tomorrow, though, okay? Because tomorrow's going to be your first day. If you'd like to work here as a broker. Would you like that, Chris? Yes, sir. Good. We couldn't be happier. So, welcome. Was it as easy as it looked? No, sir. No, no, sir, it wasn't. Good luck, Chris. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Okay. Um, this is um, a, a very small uh, snippet from the movie Pursuit of Happiness. And uh, I hope that you were able to see at the beginning of the clip how the instructions were passed on to the team, how the targets were set, and how everyone expected to do the same process over and over again. The great result that Will Smith was able to achieve at the end was really because he followed the steps. And in the end, he was given the reward that was promised at the beginning. This is a perfect example of transactional leadership. You follow the rules, you get the job.
let's dive more into the pros and cons of the transactional leadership. Transaction leadership is really, really focused on achieving short-term goals. The rewards are, done, are given to those who are motivated by their self-interest to follow the instructions. So if you're interested to get the job because you are going to be rewarded, this is the kind of uh, transactional, uh, this is the kind of leadership for you. The rewards and penalties are very clear and defined for all of the team members. This eliminates confusion and helps people to follow the chain of command. Also, uh, transactional leadership provides an unambiguous structure for the systems requiring repetitive tasks. It creates achievable goals for individuals at all levels, reduces costs while improving productivity, and is a very simple process to implement. On the other hand, transactional leadership has some cons. The rewards, the rewards for the team members are only on the practical level. When someone takes the initiative to do something that is outside of the system, there is no rewarding pro uh, program or perk for that person. Creativity is very limited since the goals and the objectives are already set and changing them is not really uh, very commonly done. Uh, this kind of leadership also eliminates individuality. It places success within the hands of leadership only because they set the rules and people have to follow. Um, it is it kind, it kind of makes also leadership incompetence difficult to counteract because it is all done through the same person and everything has to go through the same process and through the same set of approval cycles. This kind of leadership creates more followers than it does leaders. Now let's move on to the transformational leadership. The transformational leadership was coined, the term was coined by James Downtown and the concept was developed further by James Burns in 1978. The, the, the definition goes as follows. Leaders and followers make each other advance to higher levels of morality and motivation. Through the strength of their vision and personality, transformational leaders are, are able to inspire followers to change expectations, perceptions, and motivations to work towards common goals. Transformation leadership uh, is um, formed of four components, and we call them the four I's. Idealized influence, inspiration and motivation, intellectual simulation, and individual consideration. These are all big words. However, they mean very simple things. Idealized influence is when the leader serves as the ideal model or the role model, as we call it. He walks the talk. He is admired for this. So being the idol, the transformation and leadership embodies the qualities that he or she wants uh, in his team or, or, or uh, his, in her team. In this case, the followers see the leader as the, model, uh, as the model and emulate that model. This is easy to implement because it is very, very, um, let me say, uh, kind of inspiring to just follow something that you already see. So the first thing that it is idealized influence. The second, second thing about transformation and leadership is that it's, it has inspiration and motivation. And this is something that I'm sure everyone is aware of. Transformation and leaders have the ability to inspire and motivate followers through having a vision and presenting that vision, uh, presenting that vision Combined these first two eyes, the idealized influence and the inspirational motivation uh, will constitute the transformational leader's uh, charisma. A transformational leader manages to inspire the followers easily with clarity. The transformational leader convinces the followers with simple, easy and uh, steps, uh, words and so on to follow. The third, uh, the th intellectual simulation. Intellectual simulation is 
where the leader changes, challenges his followers to innovate and create. They encourage the followers to challenge the status quo. A common misunderstanding is that transformational leaders are soft, but no, the truth is they're constantly challenging the followers to make them go to higher levels. As for the individual consideration, of course, we all know that transformational leadership focuses a lot on the people and what they really add to the team and how everyone adds extra value and how everyone's opinion matters a lot. So let's just remember this about the transformational leadership, the four eyes, the influence, the motivation, the intellectual stimulation and the individual consideration. Transformational leadership also entails close collaboration between you as a leader and your team in order to identify and execute the change. Transformational leadership is about striking a balance between the short-term vision and the long-term goals. It adopts a motivational management approach. It creates a mindset shift. It can be a driving force for growth and success especially that if you recruit well and build a positive company uh, to build a, you recruit the right people to build a positive company structure and culture. Employees are feeding on your example and on your personality. It is kind of focused on transforming others to support each other and the organization as a whole. Transformation and leadership fosters communication, feedback, integrity, emotional intelligence, transparency, flexibility, collaboration, and opportunities. This type of leadership is very effective when the work is very stressful, when there is great uncertainty, when a new culture is built, and when we're trying to induce change. Let's take a quick look together. I'm hopeless. You're, you're just flourishing your wand too much. Try it like this. Expelliarmus! Make it a powerful memory. The happiest you can remember. Allow it to fill you up. Keep trying, Seamus. George, Expecto your turn now. Expect a Patronus! A full-bodied Patronus is the most difficult to produce, but shield forms can also be equally useful against a variety of opponents. Fantastic, Jenny! Just remember, your Patronus can only protect you for as long as you stay focused. So focus, Luna! Think of the happiest thing you can. Expect your Patronus. I'm trying. I know. Patronus, good. This is really advanced stuff, guys. You're doing so well. Now focus on a fixed point and try again. Expel the armors. Very good. Keep your concentration. Right? A little higher. So that's it for this lesson. Now we're not going to be meeting again until after the holidays. So just keep practicing on your own as best you can. And, and well done, everyone. Great, great work. Talk up, mate. 
Harry Potter actually is one of my favorite characters and I learned about Harry Potter from my children. And the reason why I chose this scene was because Harry is such a transformational uh, leader. And in this scene, you can see him trying to teach his uh, school friends or uh, <laughs> whatever, okay, uh, different uh, spells. And the spells, some of them are uh, basically to, you know, fight bad spirits or whatever. But the dynamics in the scene are amazing. He goes between them. He is among them. He's inspiring them. He's not uh, away. He's helping the weak. He's supporting whoever needs the help. And he's encouraging. He's inspiring. He's putting some positive vibes. Uh, he's making them feel that he understands what they're going through, that it is not something easy to do what you're doing, and that it is challenging, but you can still do it. He makes them understand that he believes in their power and they all succeed. It is amazing to see at the very last part of the scene, uh, the look on Harry's face when like feeling so accomplished when everyone has, you know, learned the spells and also the look on the team's faces as they feel sad that he's going or they're going on summer vacation or whatever. This is an amazing example of transformational leadership. Uh, let's go quickly over the transformational leadership pros and cons. The transformational leadership is an active form of leadership. It encourages change, reduces turnover, keeps organizations open, honest and ethical, and it accomplishes more as you extend your skill set, because your skill set is not just limited to you as a person or to your mindset. It is the actually the skill set of everyone in your team. However, transformational leadership also has some downsides. It, it focuses too much on the bigger picture. It can be risky and disruptive. It puts increased pressure on team members. It can lead to employee burnout sometimes. It needs continual communication, and we will get back, back to this point later. It depends too much on the character of the leader and the convincing skills to motivate his team members and keep them focused on achieving the goals. However, this kind of leadership builds leaders, and we'll also get back to that in a while. If the followers lose faith in your leadership at any point, okay, you will not be able to sell what you have. And this might be one of the big risks of transformational leadership. Now that we've been through both kinds of leadership and we've seen kind of uh, short examples, and I'm sure we see that every day in our uh, workplaces and whether the way we lead the teams or how we are led, uh, let's go quickly over the differences that we can pinpoint so quickly between transactional and transformational leaderships. Of course, transactional uh, leadership is more of a telling style, where transformation is a selling style. In, trans in transactional, you tell people what to do, and in transformational, you actually get their buy-in and they do it themselves their way. Uh, the transactional approach also features positive and negative reinforcements, as we've discussed earlier. However, the transformational uh, uh, leadership emphasizes more on motivation and inspiration. The transactional leaders um, are reactive and they're kind of like following the status quo, where, where, where the trans on the other hand, you have the transformational leadership who are more of proactive leaders. Uh, in the transactional leadership, self-interest of individuals is mainly the main focus, while in the transformation and prioritization of the group and the progress of the group is the most interesting thing or the most, the driver, let's just put it this way, it's just the driver. Transactional leaders also tend to focus on day-to-day -day operations while transformational leadership uh, leaders usually um, look at strategic guidance and high market position in the long term. However, let me tell you this, both transactional and transformational leaders, leadership styles have one thing in common, and that is they need you. They need a leader. Let's take a short break for um, 30 minutes 
and uh, come back and for 15 minutes. Okay, let's take a short break of 15 minutes and uh, we will be shortly back with you. I will be going through the questions and everything in the chat now. So uh, we are not uh, closing the session. We are leaving the session open. Uh, we're staying here. We're not ending anything. Thank you. And it gives off a feeling of radical change. Uh, back then, uh, when I was a little girl, the word, uh, uh, this word always reminded me of one thing that I have here on the screen. Butterflies. Sorry, I need to share my screen. I don't think you can see my screen. Okay, I hope everyone can see my screen now. Okay. So, uh, back to the transformation and the butterfly. The butterfly is, has always been like an inspiring um, creature for me. Um, and transformation has always related to butterflies in my mind when I was a girl. And um, they, they kind of inspire me as as I go through life. And um, I look at the butterfly and the journey it takes, and I feel this is real transformation. Um, that you can really start somewhere and end somewhere else. That you can really um, change. Uh, the, the radical change can, can happen regardless of how difficult it is or the, the amount of hardships you go through. Um, Back then, when I was little, this was the only form of transformation that I knew. As the world changed and as I grew up, and especially the past few years, um, transformation became such a cool buzzword that everyone is using. And um, it's more of a business word now. It does not give this kind of, you know, like dreamy uh, um a feel and sense to it anymore. When you hear that word, you think of digital transformation, you think of business transformation, and what have you. However, it is a kind of transformation in the same sense and the essence of the meaning. And uh, because it signifies radical change, radical change. Um, it's, it's the same way the caterpillar turns into a butterfly. However, it's done in a more serious kind of business-like uh, format. And uh, if it wasn't for these kinds of transformations, actually, we wouldn't be here together today. Uh, I would have loved very much to be with you in person. Uh, however, uh, not being with you at all is not a good option. So uh, for me, just being able to do this through digital transformation is something that I really appreciate and kind of like pays off uh, for the change of uh, transformational meaning of the word transformation. Uh, and now, uh, going back to transformation and um, focusing more on the transformation and leadership, since this is um, something that we are all keen about and want to learn more about, um, let us think of why we are considering transformational leadership. Um, we are looking into doing real change. We are all trying so hard to have a footprint, to induce a different kind of norm and, and advance in a way. Um, our continent is changing. Uh, the, a new vision is, is there, the 2063 uh, Africa vision. And it is, it, 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 we have to, we have to uh, take our role in these changes. 
the new emerging world is very fast and um, and very dynamic. Okay, and we have to um, match between the vision and our dreams of what we want to become and how we're going to really implement it. And the answer to this is through transformational leadership. There is a huge gap between the generations. And I don't mean like a, a generation gap as between people born in the 70s and people born in the 90s. What I mean is, I mean, younger people are very different now in the sense that every day there is something new for them. Um, and we have to be able to make use of that. And if we are not thinking in a transformational way, we will not be able to incorporate that into the changes and uh, the, um, the amazing things that we want to do. Uh, we want to develop our cultures. We want to pursue, um, uh, pursue a plan for succession and for con continuation. If we are not thinking transformationally, we will not be able to consider succession. Succession is such a threatening uh, idea if you're not thinking in an open mind and if you do not see uh, it as the future. We also are very keen about promoting diversification because diversification really adds flavor, it adds richness, it adds a lot of value. And if we are not considering diversification, it is also something that will affect us on the long term. We also have a very important role at the time in, in whatever we're doing, okay, with our leadership positions, with being caregivers, with being working uh, women, whatever we're doing is that we have to participate in the preparation of the new generation for a better tomorrow and invest in the talents, teach them something. And if we are not thinking in a transformational way, we will never be able to do that. And now it's time for the paper and the pencil that we have thought about like earlier and mentioned. Um, and uh, what I want you to do is to draw a triangle and split it to five layers, as you can see here. And I want you to take a minute to read these words, results, actions, opportunities, possibilities, and relationships. Um, what I want you to do is place these words on the five levels of the triangle. I will just give you a very, very sneak peek of what we should be doing in number one, and that is we're going to put results because this is what we want to reach. And uh, let's take um, 10 minutes and have everyone draw the triangle and place the words, and then let's share our um, input and our feedback together. Please start now. Okay, just to make sure everyone got this right, I want you to have a piece of paper with you, okay? And I want you to draw a triangle, like the one we have here, with the five layers, and put a number in each layer. Then, please read the words that are stated here in number two. The words are results, actions, opportunities, possibilities, and relationships. Please put results in slot number one at the top of the triangle and take a moment and think of the other words 
and think how you can put them in a way that we would reach results at the end of the workshop. Okay, I will explain one more time. Uh, yes, one. Okay, I will. I'll just make sure that. Um, okay, I will just make sure that everyone understands the, the workshop properly. So what we need to do is draw a triangle, put at the top results, and then we have actions, opportunities, possibilities, and relationships. Let's order them in a way that would lead us to results. So our target is to reach results. And what we are trying to do is place these things in a certain order where if we follow the order bottom up, we will reach results. And please feel free to ask me if you have any questions. Uh, ladies, uh, please raise your hands if you want to um, share your answer. Ready? Asana. Yes. Yes. Good morning. Good morning. Are you? Um, my results are. Um, I started from the last layer. Yes. I have to create the relationship. After creating the relationship, and number four. I'll look for the possibilities in that relationship that I've created. Then number three, going for opportunities, the possible opportunities that I can get. Then followed by action. After action is the result. Perfect. Perfect, Hasana. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, definitely you can share your answers if you want. And if you want to uh, answer also uh, in person, you can also do that. Hello, am I to share my hi. answers too? Uh, hi. Hello. You can you can either uh, like unmute yourself and um, share or just put them in the chat. Okay. I'm going through the answers. I might go. This is Wafa. Uh, this is Wafa Al Garah from uh, Al Khawain University in Morocco. Uh, I I have a slightly different 
different, uh, you know, uh, organization than that of the uh, yeah, yeah. uh, I start with relationships. I think that's the most important. Ships, can you hear me? Yes, definitely. Go ahead. Yeah, we're with you. Okay, perfect. So I said the relationships, then um, in the relationships, I would look for opportunities first. And then based on those opportunities, I look for the possibilities, what's possible, what can I actually implement. And then, of course, once I identify the possibilities, I move to the action, and finally the results. Okay, perfect. Thank perfect. you. Yes, Madam Mary, please go ahead. Yes. Uh, good afternoon. Hello, Mary. Oh, good morning, wherever you are. <laughs> yeah, mine is also different. Uh, at first, uh, from below, uh, is the relationship. And then uh, after the relationship, when I have that relationship, and then action can come in. And from the actions, then we have the opportunities. Then from opportunities to possibilities, and then lastly, the results. Thank you. Thank you, Mary. Thank you. Any plans wants to share their um, answers or should we uh, go ahead? Oui. Moi, je... Moi, c'est Nadine. Je dirais euh, d'abord en un, les résultats. Ensuite, euh, les relations. Mm -hmm. En deux, les opportunités. En trois, les actions. En quatre, mm -hmm. et euh, les possibilités. En cinq. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you, Nadine. Merci beaucoup. Merci. Véronique, uh, allez-y, s'il vous plaît. Bonjour. Je dirais que les cinq, ce sont les relations, les relations Le quatre, les opportunités. la possibilité de deux l'action de le peuple uh, Dominique uh, sound is not very clear Um, I, I can't hear you properly. Veronique. Veronique, I can't, we cannot hear you. Oh, oui, je dis que ah, un, le un c'est le résultat, le, cinq, le, le deux les actions, mm -hmm. le, le trois ce sont les possibilités, mm -hmm. le quatre les opportunités, le cinq mm -hmm. les Okay. Okay. Merci beaucoup. Okay. Uh, let's go back to our uh, screen. Can I share my own? Sure. Sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah, I looked at it slightly differently, and uh, I told myself as a leader. I would identify the opportunities that I need to exploit. Within those opportunities, I would look for the possibilities and exclude what is not possible. Once I have my possibilities, then I will establish a winning team and I will call that relationships. Mm -hmm. From the relationships, I will marshal actions. 
then the actions will give me results. Thank mm -hmm. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. You guys are amazing, really. Okay, uh, I have people raising their hands. Let me just check. I'm sorry, one second. Let me just check if anyone needs help. Mary, you want me to help you with, uh, with participants to allow them to talk? Okay, um, Marwan, are you going to allow the people with their hands up to uh, share yes. with us? Okay, yes, thank sure. you. Okay. So Thank you. we have uh, we have Dr. Fatuma, please. Go ahead, Doctor. Hello. Uh, hello, Doctor. Hello. Bonjour. <laughs> Bonjour. Bon, moi je dirais que euh, on a d'abord les résultats. Mm -hmm. Après les résultats, il y a les actions. Mm -hmm. Après les actions, il y a les possibilités. Mm -hmm. Après, c'est les relations et les opportunités. OK. Merci beaucoup. Uh, well, I think Hello. we have. Yeah. Okay. Hello. Hello. Yes. Yes. Um. I'm with you. Okay. Yes. Uh, from Zimbabwe. I was saying. Um. I was saying that. Um. I framed it this way. The business. Um. Environment. Uh. Presents us possibilities. Right. And the the endless um possibilities in the business environment from which we have to identify opportunities and exploit them. And then from then on, as a leader, you have to establish relationships by forming teams to work on but, um, your course of action that you're going to take to exploit the opportunities. And then after that, you get your intended results. Perfect, perfect, thank you. Thank you, Thank you. Okay. all right. Thank you, Lucy. Ragadi, uh, Thank you so much. Um, I just hope everybody can hear me. I'm Rahadi. I'm from South Africa. Um, in my case, I started with the results that we want to achieve, just to map out um, which direction we need to go. Um, followed by identifying the opportunities that are there that we would want to explore as well. And then followed by the actions that we need to take before we build the relationships and explore the possibilities within those relationships as well. Um, that is how mine will go. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Ajibola, please. Okay, Lucy, you can go ahead. Oh, I presented already. Hello? Okay. I've already presented. So, I've already presented. Okay, thank, you. thank you. Yes. Marawan, can we take uh, two more and uh, and then continue with the session? Yes, please. Okay, thank you. Justina? Okay, I'm Alu from Nigerian. I think I will start with create the opportunity first, then look at the possibility, then relationship, action, and finally result. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm 
Nelly, please go ahead. Uh, good afternoon, fellow ladies, women. Uh, mine, I uh, will start with identifying the opportunities. Then when I identify the opportunities, then I see if there's any possibilities for me to undertake those opportunities. Then building the relationship with the team. Then together with the team, we take any actions, the, the result. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, and we are back. And first of all, let me thank you very, very much for your contributions. This is this is beautiful. I mean, we're learning um, this together, and we're working on it together. And as some of you mentioned on the chat, there is no one right way to do it. Uh, and it all depends on the uh, leadership style that we are all following and so on. Uh, let's take a quick look. Can you see my screen? Okay. Perfect. Okay. So here is our relationship triangle. And like we all mentioned, we're going to have the results uh, at the top of the triangle. What goes here? What do we need to get results? We need actions. We need the actions to get the results done. What is it that is preventing all this well-planned action from de delivering the results? It is relationships relationships is what will what might prevent the results from happening because if the relationships are not set properly within the team the actions will not happen on top of relationships we put the possibilities out of these possibilities real opportunities can emerge so basically how this workshop goes is to get to your results, you need actions. And actions are built on opportunities. Opportunities come out of possibilities. But to have all of that happening, you need relationships. Of course, like we were just saying, and you inspiring us with your answers and so on, there is no one way to do it. And you can do it so many different ways. But the important thing is to realize the importance of relations in creating what you want in the end, in achieving the results in the end. And now we're back to our presentation. Can you see my screen? Yes, we can. Okay. So anyway, Now we are going, now we are going, uh, uh, can everyone see my screen properly? Okay, perfect, perfect. Okay, so now we are going to uh, talk about some techniques and tools that we already are using. And I'm sure you guys, I mean, you ladies are very, very inspiring to me. And definitely I will be interested in talking to you a bit more after we finish our session. Um, but the thing is that the beauty about leadership tools and techniques is that how they can be used in any setting and with minimal resources. Some of us are in uh, places where we can do team building activities, where we can... Uh... Okay, let me just remove this out of the way. Is everything okay now? Because some 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 people were complaining that they can't see the screen properly. Can you see the screen properly now? Yes. Okay. I have some people saying no. Okay. Perfect. So, um, so going back to where we were, uh, some of us are 
like have resources that we can use within our teams to do team building activities to uh, you know like develop in certain very cool ways but some of us don't have these options and the, the beauty about uh, uh, transformational leadership techniques uh, that most of them depend on things that do not cost so much and do not consume a lot of resources because they're basically related to mindset, values, and soft skills. And as the, 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 the proverb goes, a good chief is like a forest. Everyone can go there and get some, something. So this is what we're doing. We are trying to be good chiefs and uh, we're trying to give everyone something and we're trying to do it in, um, in the most uh, economic and efficient way that we can do so. Okay, so what we have here is that we have divided some of the techniques and the tools that we can use, okay, uh, to uh, get into the transformation and leadership mode and have our teams work this way. And we've divided them, as we have said in our previous slide, uh, to mindset, values, and uh, soft skills. So the mindset, our mindset, has to be shared with our team. We have to make sure that we are aligned in terms of governance, in terms of learning to look at the bigger picture, in terms of uh, um, that we have to have the same vision together, okay? Something very, very also important that I have learned and I have practiced when I was uh, creating different teams in different uh, opportunities that I've had, was that leadership needs no title. Leadership actually is a mindset. You do not have to be called a leader or a manager, and I'm sure you know that very well. However, this is something that is a technique or a tool that you have to teach to the people around you and who are working with you on your team. Otherwise, it would be very hard to work with a transformational uh, leadership mindset. Uh, it is very also, it's, it's a very, very important thing to think about the ripple effect, creating a ripple effect. And it goes with the idea of not needing a title to be a leader. The ripple effect is start by yourself and work from there. You cannot change the whole world, but you can change yourself. You cannot um, make, uh, I mean, people see you in a certain way, but you can just do the right thing. And when you do the right thing, and especially when you are a leader in what you're doing, okay, the ripple effect touches four or five people around you. And then someone can see the slides. Is this a problem with anyone else? Marwan, is everything all right with the slide sharing? Yes, we're okay here. Okay. Okay. So going back to the ripple effect. So the ripple effect is a very, very important idea to be shared among a team, okay? And it is a mindset. If I know that I can get in touch with three or four people and, uh, and just I can give them... Are we okay? Okay. And have, have them get affected by what we are doing and positively change and so on. And these three, four people would, you know, like move on to other three, four people and so on. We would be creating the ripple effect. And this is amazing inside organizations, even if it is a very, very uh, tight kind of, uh, of organization or even if it is totally transactional. The ripple effect is a mindset that is very, very important that would bring transformation even inside a very, very trans, uh, tra uh, transactional kind of organization. Another important thing uh, and a technique that we all, I'm sure we all do, but we have to be conscious when we're doing, while we're doing it, it's our mindset that we should be able to do things ourselves. Some leaders think that 
if I have a team who are doing things for me and so on, I do not have to do things by myself. I can just delegate to them. This is important and very valuable and correct at many points. However, you should be able to do things yourself and you should be among the team with them exactly like we saw Harry Potter doing uh, and it kind of inspired them. Um, also, the mindset that everyone is important, and this is very, very, very crucial because how the team treats each other affects how the team dynamics work. So if not everyone in the team thinks that they, that everyone else is important and as important as they are, regardless of their title, there, there will be no transformational uh, teams. There will be no transformational leadership, okay? We can learn from each other and we, we are all important on the same level of importance, okay? We also have to understand the idea of investing in each other, investing in terms of time, in terms of share, sharing knowledge and so on. Everyone should invest, okay? And we should also put something very, very important uh, in front of us that our value in the team is uh, is something that is um, that, that is shown by how involved each one is, is. If we go back to the music by Yanni at the beginning of the presentation, do you see how important everyone was? If one tune was off, everything would not sound the same. And we should always think this way and we should always teach our subordinates and our colleagues and you know, use this as a ripple effect. It is a very, very important tool. Also something that inspires me and um, I want to make sure that we end this day that thinking this way, that positivity is a choice. This is a mindset that we all have to you know, think about, we have to uh, talk to each other about. And it is a very, very um, core value when you talk about transformational leadership, because it gets rough, it is stressful, it is depressing, frustrating most of the time. However, if you choose to be sad this day, you can choose to be happy the next day, you can choose to be positive the next day. And this is a mindset that would give some space to transformational leadership to, to, to happen. Uh, as we mentioned, everyone has to be included. Everyone is part of the melody. And um, I like when uh, John Maxwell puts it this way. He says, the entire population of the world with one minor exception is actually composed of others. And think about this line for a minute. It is, it's very, interesting. I mean, we think we're very important and we are. However, we're just one out of many. And transformational leadership is based on this core that we are just one out of many, no matter how skilled or how inspiring or how smart we are. Still, we cannot do everything. And this is the mindset that we should have and we should transfer to everyone uh, in our teams. Also, we have to teach our team and think this way that our team is an opportunity it is not a threat i know we realize that but sometimes we are not focused on it sometimes we don't see the opportunity in our team and sometimes people you know worry like from team members and so on are they going to rise above me is it going to be a threat for my job you should not look this way that's not the mindset that you want to have on your team i know there are some exceptions, things are not rosy, I understand, but we're talking like a general mindset. Another very important thing in the mindset and uh, a very important technique to use is that we should always stretch our limits and our boundaries. The limits and the boundaries are something that we create for ourselves. Whatever you say that you were not able to do yesterday, you look at yourself today and you see that you can do it. And this is a mindset that is very, very important for transformational leadership. I mean, ladies, we're trying to transform here. How are we going to transform within the same limits that we have every single day? Also, we have to believe that we can be the change. I love this quote uh, by Gandhi. And um, it's, it's, it, it, 
it's it's very inspiring. I, I have it written here as a tattoo, okay? And I believe in it so much. And it is something exactly like positivity. If you believe in positivity, if you believe that you can be the change, this is the mindset that you should put in everyone around you, okay? Because success is something that we create. And this is also a mindset that we have to have in a proper transformational team and in trans proper transformation uh, leadership. We also have some values. Of course, I'm, I'm not covering everything here. I'm just, you know, I'm just trying to think with you on things that uh, are important. Uh, there are so much more that I can learn from you and there are so many other values that we can add and mindsets and so on. Hope, for example, hope is a value and it is very interesting how hope is related to transformational leadership because uh, uh, hope, uh, as Augustine Hippo said, has two beautiful daughters. Their names are anger and courage. Anger at the way things are and courage to see that they don't remain as they are. Let me read that again. It's, it's, it's a very beautiful quote. Hope has two beautiful daughters. Their names are anger and courage. Anger at the way things are and courage to see that they don't remain as they are. Very, very interesting. It was kind of a breakthrough for me when, when I read this quote and I learned about it. And uh, it teaches you that hope is, 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 so, is a very, very important tool to change. If we do not have, have hope, we do not change. If we don't think that anything is possible, we cannot change. And we can use the daughters of hope, anger and courage, to really be transformational and to change things, okay? Of course, we have integrity. We have, we have to appreciate and respect everyone in our teams. We have to be true to our values. We cannot teach and promote within our teams things that we do not believe in. And I'm sure we all know that. However, I want to draw your attention to something tiny here. It is very important to be true to the values your values, not just any values. You know why? Because some of us are raised in close communities, we're raised in certain ways, we've been through things, and it's kind of imposed on us what values are important for us. And sometimes we cannot really promote these values because we do not really believe in them. And that is not very, very practical because if you want to preach something, you have to really do it, talk the walk the talk or whatever. Okay, so choose your values and be true to them, your values. Also a very, very important value that um, I, I was inspirational as well for me when, when I learned how this can be related to uh, uh, transformational leadership and it is called multiplication. And we're going back to my favorite John Maxwell when he says, when you stop asking, what can I do for others to help them and start asking, what can I do with others to train them? Okay, you shift from addition to multiplication. Let me read that one more time. When you stop asking what I can do for others to help them and start asking, what can I do with others to train them? You shift from addition to multiplication. And we all know that multiplication produces so much uh, when compared to addition. Let me just uh, give you some insights here. Um, when I say multiplication here, I mean that I should be able to give more people, to train more people, like all doctors say, uh, uh, train one, I mean, see one, do one, train one. And whoever of you is coming from a medical background would understand that. Uh, a doctor is always supposed to see an operation, do an operation, and train uh, and train someone uh, to do an operation. Okay, so this is multiplication. And it is very, very important when we think about it in terms of transformational leadership. We, and as John Maxwell says, it is not just about 
helping others or supporting others. It's about training others, okay? And this is something that not only the leader is, is, is responsible for here, it is more of everyone's responsibility within a team, be it a team of two people, 100 people, whatever we have, be it in a very rigid environment, in a flexible, cool environment, what have you, okay? However, multiplication is a very, very, very uh, important uh, uh, value that we should always think about, okay? So multiplication, again, just one more time, is when I understand that it is part of my responsibility, not just to help others, but to train them. And for transformation to happen, for the ripple effect to happen, this has to be part of it, an inherent part of it. It's not just any part of it, okay? As for the soft skills, of course, we have loads of soft skills that are very important to uh, leadership in general and team building and so on. And I'm sure you're bored from listening to that. However, there is just one thing here that I want to highlight, especially related to communication. And that is when we say communication, the first thing that comes to mind is talking. And actually, communication is more of listening than talking. And being a leader sometimes kind of drags you into this talking and preaching and so on. And the problem is when you stop listening, you stop becoming a leader because a transformational leader should be able to listen all the time. Because when you listen to your subordinates, your team members, your colleagues, your so, you, the people around you, you can create a bigger vision. Uh, you can have a actual, a real um, vision of what's happening. I mean, of what, what you have and where you want to be. When you listen, you know the people around you more and you can stretch yourself more. You can stretch your team more. So whenever the word communication comes, we need to think about listening before we think about uh, communicating and expressing ourselves, which is very, very important. I, I'm not saying this is not important. However, listening and listening and listening. Okay, definitely encouragement, definitely adaptability, definitely flexibility. All of this, it's, it's, it, it's all very, very important. Okay. And now um, I will uh, give you um, a 15 minutes break uh, to freshen up and think about what we have said. And uh, we'll be back in 15 minutes, hopefully, for uh, our last uh, session about transformational leadership. See you in a little bit. Thank you.
Welcome back, everyone. And I hope everyone can hear me. So we're back, Dr. Mary? Yes. Okay. Okay. And uh, we are back. Let me just share my screen. Okay. So now we uh, come to our uh, last part of uh, our training, and, and we are. Okay, so I have this session called Write Your Story. And we've, we've talked about this throughout our sessions and our chats. And uh, first, we, before we think about our stories, let's just take a quick look at some of the transformation and leaders that are known. So we have uh, Ross Perot, okay? We have Jeff Bezos, okay? But before these guys that we know, uh, transformation, let me share something with you. Transformation and leadership is not a new concept, okay? Um, uh, he's, um, it's, it's, it's more of a historic thing. However, people did not call it back then transformation and uh, leadership, okay? So throughout history, we've had a lot of transformation and leadership, leaders and uh, following leadership and proper way and everything. However, it was not realized this way. We have Alexander the Great. We have Queen Elizabeth the First. We have uh, Gandhi. We have Nelson Mandela. We have Walt Disney. We have so many people, okay? And uh, uh, we're going to take a quick look at some of... Uh, uh, guys that we know, like in companies that we know now. And for example, Ross, Electric Data Systems, EDS. Uh, he had immense trust in his employees. Um, he always um, extend, extended them their, their skills. Uh, he, he gave them full autonomy, okay? And this made them do smart decisions and satisfied his customers, Jeff Bezos. Focusing on the customer, uh, transformation is moving uh, from, um, and it's not a bad thing to say, just a bookseller to Amazon. Amazon, the perfect model for transformation and leadership. Okay, we can go really big with transformation and leadership. We just have to have the right mindset for it. Henry Ford. Henry Ford is. Uh, he had this idea of to do more for the world than the world does for you. And this is the essence of transformation, transformational leadership. To do more for the world than the world does for you. To do more for your team than the team does for you. To do more for the organization and so on. This is transformational leadership, okay? Steve Jobs. Steve Jobs, when he was first at Apple, he was perceived as an autocratic kind of leader. Okay, when he came back, he changed the game totally. Okay, he he became more more transformational. Okay, he he worked differently. He he looked at uh, critical uh, 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 situations differently. He looked at his team differently. I mean, Apple is quite impressive. Uh, we also have Reed Hastings, Netflix. He re revolutionized the viewing habits of millions, okay? He gives his employees unlimited vacation times, which is amazing, of course, and he does not micromanage them, okay? And he does not make insist on having them in uncomfortable seats and so on. However, they deliver, okay? So that's the whole point. Think of what you can do that fits your organization. Think that what is gonna be suitable for uh, the type of work that you need to do. Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey, of course, is both a transformational and a charismatic leader, okay? She's, she's, she's the perfect description for this uh, kind of, uh, of leader, okay? Um, she has a clear vision, she has a mission, and she has the right team. She inspires her team, and they help her reach all of her uh, goals and accomplish everything else. Per se. Okay. However, 
let me tell you one thing. These guys, I mean, they're amazing and they're very, very impressive and so on. But is it just limited to these cool guys or it can be all of us? It can be any one of us. Okay. These are all like very, very um, prominent African uh, women. And if we can have a, a moment to like share our cameras, I would be looking at more and more transformational leaders yourselves. Okay. And, and yes, we can do it. And yes, we can write our own stories. We can lead the change and we can become exactly transformational like those other amazing transformational leadership leaders we have seen. Okay. So now it's time for us to write our own story. Okay. To write our own story, we need to see more than others. Okay. We've spoken earlier about what we should share with our team, how we have to uh, share with them the mindset, how we have to act when they're around us and so on. But when it comes to our own story, our own version of the leadership, our own inspiration, okay, we have to look at ourselves and we have to rise above certain situations. We have to see more than others. We have to know that the difficulty is kind of just now, but we can get over it. If we look backwards, we understand so many of the hardships that we've been through, okay? So we have to see into everything more than others. We have to analyze. We have to go deep into everything that we go through, okay? We have to know ourselves. We have to explore. We have to um, think of where we need to um, develop, okay? As much as we're working on developing our teams, development of ourselves is something that there is no option. We have to keep doing it. We have to know ourselves and keep developing ourselves. We have to learn, unlearn, and relearn. Okay? It's not enough that we're teaching everyone around us, but it's very, very important to be able to teach them new things and have them grow and so on to keep learning, unlearning the wrong stuff and relearning stuff that. We did not learn before. Okay? Practice. Very, very important for us to practice and everything that we're preaching. It's not enough for us to just um, teach others what to do. Like I said before, we have to do it ourselves. Very, very important. We have to be agile. And this is a very, very inherent part of transformational leadership. Being agile and adapting to what's happening and changes that we're going through, adapting to uh, junior team members who come in with new technologies, with new mindset, with a new way of dealing with things and handling problems. This is something that we have to do. Not only our teams should be transforming and working and doing so on. We have to be doing the same exact thing ourselves, okay? We have to value our yesterdays because yesterday, is our teacher, but we have to live in today because today is our positive energy. Today is the change. Today is our hope for something better, okay? We learn to walk by falling and we learn to lead by trying, okay? And, and it's very, very important, like you all said, that it is our own story, okay? So we have to create a unique leadership footprint. Okay, uh, devising your own leadership style is, is, is very important because, because the thing is, if, if, you, if you think that one thing is going to work for everyone, it doesn't go this way. However, what I want to uh, make sure that we are all in agreement on is using transformational leadership as a start point to develop your own leadership style. So it is pillared on transformation leadership. However, it has your own flavor to it. It has your own sense. It has your own experience, your own footprint, footprint, your own story. Of course, the question comes, is it challenging? It is super challenging, okay? Because Okay, we know that leadership is not gender specific. However, let's be frank. Um, challenge is something that we face every single day of our lives as women. Okay, 
we we care so much for all the men in our lives they and we're thankful for their existence they are our fathers our sons our brothers our husbands and we love them okay however the fact that no one can deny is that we are facing more challenges in life nothing comes for granted we have to work so hard to reach where we are and we have and it's very very hard for us to leave a footprint somewhere and when it comes to leadership it is more challenging because sometimes we're not treated equally uh, sometimes it's hard to build alliances and a support network uh, in an ecosystem or an environment that is mainly, uh, let's just say, not very uh, female friendly. And um, sometimes we're bullied. Uh, there are sometimes no expectations from what we can do. And um, expectations are always set lower for some reason. And however, let me tell you something. Each of these challenges and so many more can be counteracted. For example, if the expectations are low, then it is our chance to, you know, rise above the, the, those expectations and excel. Okay. Uh, if it is, if you were, you were being bullied, okay, it is a chance for us to show the world that women bring in more diversity, okay, into any equation, right? So it is challenging. The leadership journey is a hard one. However, I am very sure that we are we have all the right skills and we are more than ready for it, especially when it comes to transformation and leadership and writing our own story of transformation and leadership. OK, so there is hope. And um, and the hope is that despite uh, the, the challenges and how we're perceived and so on, we can bring into the equation some things that maybe men are not uh, aware of because we kind of do it in other parts of our lives, okay? We motivate through transformation by nature because of uh, the, 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 our relations and our family connections and if we're caregivers and so on, okay? And uh, we work with people in general, regardless of the business, both on the emotional uh, part and the intelligent part. We work with the EQ and the IQ. And this is something that is uh, very transformational because we can build relations and we can motivate the people. And, uh, and this is something that is quite uh, important for transformational leadership, okay? Uh, we learn, we already know and we have to put people ahead of ourselves. And this is something that is very, very important and a core thing in transformational leadership. Because if you do not put people ahead of yourself, you will not be able to um, really become a team, okay? If you keep always putting your, uh, uh, your goals and what you want in life and so on, it's, it's, it's hard because you'll never be able to build a team that goes for one goal, okay? Uh, we empathize. We focus on elevating others. And these things are very, very important for transformation and leadership. And we excel at them. Let me just put it this way, okay? And we do it by nature. Uh, like Sheryl Sandberg said, in the future, there will be no female leaders there will just be leaders. And now, as we are approaching the end of our session, uh, and before I tell you that we will meet again, I want you to, uh, um, to take this poll one more time, okay? Uh, and think again, differently. Is it, is, is, is the, a style of leadership that is followed in my organization, the right style. Forget about how it is actually, okay? But think, is it the right style, okay? If it is the right style, choose the same option that you chose in the first poll. If it is not the right style, what is the right style for your organization, regardless of what's happening there? Uh, this is um, while everyone is uh, participating in the poll and uh, okay and uh, giving in their answers. The answer of the poll is basically for you. 
it is something for you to think about uh, because transactional uh, leadership and transformation leadership are, are both very, very important. We cannot say one is more important than the other. It depends on the situation and depends on so many things and depends on the uh, organization and so on, okay? However, transformation and leadership is beautiful in the sense that it can be incorporated inside any kind of uh, leadership there is, okay? Because it depends on the people, it depends on the mindset, values, what you show the world, how you deal with the world, and... Um, and uh, how you present yourself to the world and so on. Uh, it has been my honor being with you today and uh, I've really enjoyed it. And I hope that you can, uh, that you, you've, uh, you've benefited in any way and that I've uh, reached out to you in any way that possible. And um, I will be sharing my contacts and uh, feel free to connect with me. I will try to answer the questions as much as possible. And um, I want to thank you so much for your participation. It's amazing. Uh, and I want you to think about our workshop. I want you to think about the poll. The answers of the poll and the comparison of your first answer with your second answer is something for you to think about. How we sorted out the layers in the triangle is something for you to think about. There is no right or wrong. There is what's best and what can be done and what cannot be done, what I can do and what I cannot do, okay? It's just that keep transforming, keep changing, keep learning, because you're playing a very, very important role, whatever you're doing, and uh, I wish everyone the best of luck. Thank you very much. Want to open the questions? Mary? Hi, Mary. You want to open the questions? You want us to open the questions for the, our participants? Or we go or we move to the uh, e photo? Okay, so we are closing the session now, closing the meeting. Thank you all for being here. Thank you, Mary, for your time. And uh, we are going thanks, to be... Thanks, for one. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, the second session, you can find it on the, on the agenda, on the training session uh, section. It's going to be at 2.30. And see you then. Thank you all.